So today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new game for the consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One, called Breakout. And it's made by the creators of another game that you might have already heard of, Warface. And the team have sponsored this video as well and they've asked me to, to tell you all about it really. So if you want to check out the game for yourself, it's already available via digital stores on the Xbox One and the PS4 for $19.99. At a high level, Breakout is a slow-paced 5v5 tactical shooter game, and as I've already said, it's coming to the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. The team behind the game, they noticed a gap in the market that they wanted to fill, where console gamers weren't getting a game like this with this kind of experience, and with Counter-Strike and more recently, Valorant making a big splash on PC, Breakout really has a chance to fill the gap here on the consoles. Counter-Strike has a heavy influence on Breakout, so anyone who's played that game, they will feel right at home here. With it being a 5v5 game, you have two different factions that you can be fighting with, the Reapers and the Wardens. Breakout is set in this world of tomorrow, and both of these factions take on the form of private mercenary companies, and this brings some distinct differences to the gameplay and the weaponry that you get to use. Right now, Breakout supports one PvP game mode called Search and Destroy, which is a round-based game mode, on five different maps, and they will all be ready for you to play at launch. The maps are called Sandstorm, Facility, Storage, Oasis, and City. You either start as the Attackers, which are the Reapers, or the Defenders, the Wardens, and you play out halves until a team reaches a score limit, declaring them the winners. More maps will be coming after the launch as well, it's just they're starting off with five, they wanted to focus on some core experiences and get those maps right. Okay, so that pretty much covers the basics, but what is Breakout actually like to play? Well, one of the first things you are going to notice is how the gunplay feels. Like other 5v5 shooters in this framework, Breakout uses asymmetrical weapon balance. The Wardens, they have access to a certain set of weapons like M16s and MP5s, and the Reapers, they get a different set of weapons like the AK-47s. This means, depending on which faction you're currently playing as, you have a different pool of weapons to choose from and a different set of weapon handling setups that you have to master. At the beginning of each round, you're able to buy your weapons from a weapon wheel, hitting down on the D-pad, alongside equipment and armour if you've got the cash to buy that stuff. Purchasing equipment to pre-nade corners, that could be really helpful, perhaps taking out an enemy quickly right at the start of a round. There's over 30 different weapons that you can choose from, and they're split into the following categories. Handguns, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. The weapons themselves, those all have distinct recoil patterns that you'll have to learn and master, and that's going to take some time. There's no attachment system or ways to change the statistics of the weapon here in Breakout, and that's to make sure that every player is kept on a level playing field. There is cosmetic customization with different sites that you can choose, but I'll touch on that later on in the video. You are going to notice quite a long time to kill here in Breakout. Weapons do need quite a few bullets to take down enemies. And this is part of the design of the game to give it more of a tactical feeling on the consoles. That's according to the development team. This makes headshots matter more. And during gunfights, they can greatly speed up the time that it takes you to kill somebody. Headshots are not a one-shot kill for most of the weapons in the game. They're worked out on a multiplier instead. Only the sniper options allow you to one-hit kill to the head in most situations. With the TTK then being somewhat slower than other games in this framework, positioning does become more important in Breakout. The maps that you're going to be playing on, they are typically designed to support the kind of sporadic up-down combat of other tactical shooters where for brief moments you're fighting, you're holding a corner, trying to take down an opponent and generally making lots of noise, and then the rest of the time you're either moving around quietly to get close to the bomb site or you're defending an angle to try and ambush somebody. I quite liked the storage map and the facility map, both of which offered some more open and some more claustrophobic locations, which admittedly did test my controller skills, being mainly a PC player, it did take me a couple of rounds to get a feel for the controls. 
The kind of combat that Breakout promotes means that power comes in numbers, so partnering up and moving around in pairs, that makes for a better experience. Coming across an enemy, it was much easier to take them down and move on if you had a 2v1. But if you're on the bad end of a 2v1 gunfight, you are going to find it hard to win that gunfight, unless you've got far more superior positioning, or you catch out a team and shoot them from behind. Personally, I'd like to see a bit more lethality to the weapons to allow players to take part in 1v1s and know that it's really the person with the best weapon skill that comes out on top, but by bringing an element of positioning into the equation, Breakout does somewhat set itself apart from other games that are in this same mould. Crouching movement, that does become more important as well, because by crouching you make less noise and you are a less obvious target. You could sneak up on an enemy who is holding a position or catch them by surprise by dropping down from a height above them. It's not a true stealth tactic because you do still make some noise, but it is going to help on some rather quiet areas of the map, especially when there's less players alive. Running around with your pistol, that triggers a faster sprint speed, and then running with your knife out, you reach your maximum sprint speed. However, switching back to your gun isn't a quick process, so there is a bit of risk-reward here. Do you want to rush and try and get to a position early by running with your knife out, and risk getting taken down, or do you go slower, have your gun out, and always be ready for a gunfight? There's a few different options here, and depending on which map you're playing on and what the structure of your team is, that could come into play more often than not. And just before I end this gameplay section, the footage you're watching was recorded in the casual mode of this game, but there will be a ranked portion as well. The difference between the two is that the ranked mode, that removes helmet and body armor at the start of a match, and if you die you have to rebuy that because you'll end up losing it. Ranked is the more competitive environment, obviously, where players will be able to go up against other players of similar skill. So that's the important gameplay stuff there for Breakout, but what else does this game have going for it? Well, there's customization for you to consider. Breakout is going fully cosmetic only with its customization, and that's to make sure that players are all on a level playing field when it comes to the weaponry. This way, the skill of the player is going to shine through rather than other variables seeping into the gunplay experience like an attachment system, for example, and that would allow one player to one-up another in a certain situation. Cosmetic customization comes in the form of weapon skins and melee options, some of which I captured here. The weapon customization, admittedly, is super simple. The skins cover the entire weapon, and there's a separate option for the sights of the weapon. Now, the different sights, they don't do anything to the weapon statistics. They are purely there as a cosmetic choice for the player if they have a certain style of sight that they want to use, or they want a little bit more zoom optic, on one of the weapons. Now, you're probably wondering if these cosmetics are the way the team is planning to support Breakout. Well, partly, and partly not, because Breakout will be a paid game, launching for around $20, and then all post-launch updates will be free to all players who buy the game. All of the cosmetic items that you see in the game, they will be earnable via gameplay, but there will be an in-game store as well where you can use real-world currency to access the items you want. So if there's a skin that you want for a certain weapon and you're using that one all of the time when you're playing for one of the factions, you can just buy that weapon skin if you want to. Now, according to the devs, this system will allow them to keep the game updated with new maps and weapons and content for free to anyone who's bought the game and not have to rely on a seasonal battle pass to keep revenue coming in. Now, personally, I think this is somewhat of an interesting choice because it kind of goes against the way the industry is moving at the moment, where free-to-play games are becoming more of a standard with those paid battle passes unlocking cosmetics each season, giving people a reason to come back and work through the battle pass. So it's going to be interesting to see how the team handles things moving forwards because they're going for a very different system to what's available in other games at the moment. So I do have a couple of closing thoughts to make about Breakout. I do have a couple of things. It's certainly a type of FPS game that doesn't currently exist 
on the consoles, it brings a Counter-Strike-like 5v5 tactical experience to the consoles, so I think it has a chance to succeed there. The gunplay is less impactful than I thought it would be. There's more of an emphasis on positioning due to that slower time to kill, and the map layouts, they felt really good for the type of combat that this game is going to bring. There wasn't one of the five maps that I felt was out of place or wasn't performing in the way I expected it to. All of them offered a good stage for the combat that Breakout offers. So if you want to give Breakout a go, click the link at the top of the description to learn more. And a big thanks to the Breakout team for sponsoring this video. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.